Oh god, dude, that face! What is that? Hey yo, uh, welcome back to another part of Danganronpa. And as you can tell, we have this creepy music right here because, well, some shit's about to go down. I knew those three times were just, you know, another calm before the storm. I believe, uh, right, some of the guys were starting to get, uh, pressured because of the old memories thing. And if I remember correctly, I'm supposed to find somebody. Oh no, there were like five people that weren't, that were missing, I believe. So, um... I knocked on all the doors, but nobody answered. Did they all go to see what happened? What about the second floor of the school? That's the only place that's new to us. Well, time to go. Okay. What creepy crap are we gonna see now? Um... Was it the library? Doesn't seem like it. There's nothing of here interest. You should go look somewhere else. I guess it's a swimming pool then. Please don't show us any drowning. Wait. Oh. What? Wait. What? Ah. Wait. Oh, that's the third floor. I see. Oh. Interesting. The door is open, but aren't these supposed to be locked? What do we have now? What did you do? For this investigation, I have unlocked the doors. Please look around to your heart's content. Oh. Okay. I investigation? It's all clear now. Just as I thought. Yakuya. I see. Judging from what he's just said, there can be no doubt a murder really has taken place. Already? Come on. C come on! In the locker rooms. You're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed, wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? <laughs> it seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girl's locker room. He was muttering as if talking only to himself. Without waiting for a reply, he pressed his hand against the girl's locker room door. The door swung open without a sound. But I thought that's not allowed. Oh wait, no, Monokuma allowed it. In that moment, time seemed to freeze. Are we going to see another dead body? No. Ah. Uh, no. Thank you. I f I hate this game. I absolutely. I. What? Why? What? Oh. What the actual... What... What kind of a black magic fuckery is this? What is this shit? What the f... What? What? I, it doesn't even make sense. You're supposed to get away with the murder. What's the point of this? Uh, what? No... It's like this game is listening to who my favorite characters are, and then they just kill them right off. What the cunt? I don't know how long it took me for the. Oh. Ah! <laughs> my ass. Fuck me. Dude, she didn't even get to show us her skills, man. A wild, almost primeval scream escaped from my mouth.
Dude, that's... Wow, dude, that's... That's just messed up, man. That's messed up. I tried to suppress my screaming, but it was useless. It surged out of me like water from a spring gushing out of the ground. I still can't- I- I- I still- I'm- I'm still trying to absorb what just happened, but... Yo, what the hell? Byakuya, on the other hand, he's like smiling like a dick, probably. Very strange. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. He was totally calm, almost like he was watching this all unfold in front of a TV screen. See. Look! Yeah, I'm looking. Chihiro's corpse has been suspended somehow. And something's been written on the wall, in blood. Bloodlust. Hmm. Such a brutal way to kill someone. No, this is beyond brutal. Wouldn't you agree? They killed her! How could it not be brutal? Hmm. No, that's not my point. This murder is far too bizarre for any everyday amateur to have committed it. Unlike with Sayaka, this murder was not a crime of passion or necessity. Hmm. It's almost as if whoever did this, did it for fun. You see what I mean, don't you? What? My head was swimming, I was still reeling, too confused to understand what he was trying to say. And before I could even begin to clear my head... What the heck? Hey! I heard screaming! There's something- Ha! Ah! Chihiro! <laughs> Holy shit! A body has been discovered! Shut the fuck up! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! There's- there was no point! And Monokuma claims that he doesn't do these things, but... It makes no sense, man! What the hell was that? What? Ah, that's right, you were unconscious during Sayaka, so you don't know about it. What you just heard was the body discovery announcement. Apparently when three or more people discover a body, an announcement plays to let everyone know. I imagine it's so that the search for the culprit can proceed fairly for everyone involved. Proceed... Fairly? The body discovery announcement? Then Chihiro really is... Naturally. Dead, yes. D -d 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 Before you start screaming your head off, go round everyone up. Seems another game has begun. How's this a... Come on, I... I mean, technically it's a game, but don't just say it like so casually, man. Come Another life or death game to uncover a killer. Is he gonna say some shit like, how exciting? Oh, okay, good. <sighs> Why, Chihiro? Dude. Haka bolted out of the locker room. As everyone made their way to the scene, it felt as if no time at all passed. It was like my sense of time had just taken wing and flown away. When I finally came back to myself, I saw everyone had the same look of confusion, fear, and anger. We all just stood there. <laughs> Gather around Shiro's body. Yo. Damn. Oh my goodness. I couldn't keep her safe. So there's another victim. Which means we are now in the same position once again. Fuck, oh, man. What the heck is this? It's a dream. This is a dream. It's all just a dream. In fact, I haven't been... Born yet? I don't have any memory of ever being alive. Exactly. Shut up. Uh, can someone at least like untie her or something? Yeah, I, I, I don't even want to look at her body, man. That's, that's. God damn. Just a second. Wait. Hey. There's something written on the wall. Doesn't that concern you? Not really. I mean, it just as bloodlust. I mean, it is awfully neat, though. So, I guess it's safe to assume it's a girl? It's not Taka, is it? God, no. She is a writer. But then what grudge would she have on... The, bl the word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. So... I don't think it's any kind of dying message. I don't think it was a dying message, I think the killer did it. It's just too... strange. But you know, that thing about writing bloodlust in blood, doesn't it seem kind of familiar? A murderous fiend who kills again and, again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. 
Nah, 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 nah. This has to be bait. I think I I think it is Toka. Or what's her name? Toko. She likes Byakuya. She must have heard Byakuya say this, and I think she did. So to kind of like... What's the word? Like, kind of get his attention. Toka must have done this shit just to... That's fucking retarded. If, if that... If, if my hypothesis is true, I'm, I, I'm so done. You're, you're like a ghost, attacking suddenly then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give this give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide... Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend whose grisly attacks were famous all across the country. The ultimate murderous fiend, creating a reputation of abnormal downright cruel killings. What is this? And this is... Some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style? But why would anyone do that? Hmm. Perhaps it's the work of the real Genocide Jack. What? The real- Wait, are you saying Genocide Jack is here in the school? Could that actually be the 16th guy? That I was predicting? I doubt no it though. Way. But going so far as to write bloodlust at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. Yeah, it doesn't sound like Genocide Jack. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. What is it now? Poke the Wait, did Aoi actually Sheena was pointing toward the entrance to the girls' locker room. Man don't even. She's faking it, isn't she? Toko was the last to arrive. I wonder why. She was probably kinda like Preparing herself mentally, and now she just she was just standing there. <laughs> dot dot dot. N no. What? Why? Why? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Ew! What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, bro? Uh. <laughs> she fainted. That did not sound good. But oh. Toko. You know, rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started sh trying to shake her awake. Oh. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up! Oh. oh, that's right. I just remember what she said about how she faints every time she- anytime she sees blood. Oh. So she is homophobic. I imagine she does not watch too many horror films then. Uh, oh. This isn't a violation of the rule, right? I mean, technically she passed out somewhere besides her room. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping. Like, on purpose. Hmm. Ah, so since she didn't faint on purpose, it doesn't count. Gotcha. Just a second. Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up. As if she'd heard her. Toko suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction, I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. Uh... Ugh, I... In no time flash, she was just standing up. Ignoring the physical contortions she had to go through, her motions were totally haphazard. Huh? What? So <laughs> oh my god, sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? But Toko, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? Alright, it's Toko. Uh, can somebody please... ...gag her or something? What the heck? She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. <laughs> the world has a front and a back, the top inning and the bottom, and a, and a sea of truth and web of lies. Well. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. No, no, no. Everything's fine. At least the stutter's all gone. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> what the hell? It's clear to me that everything is not fine. Her eyes seem strangely vacant. Mm. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. So, I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? Mm -hmm. If you need help, I don't mind. Um... Taka, can you help me? Huh? You totally ignored me. Hmm. Very well. You take care of the girl, and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mundo on guard duty again. But hold on a second. Rushing to investigation? The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. Ugh. Don't make me repeat 
There is no question that Chihiro's was murdered by someone among us. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Right past rain. But don't take it as a bad thing. It's just a fact of life. Because... Yahoo! That's how graduation works. Oh, don't show me this. Then it's happened again? Is that what you're saying? That another one of us? Another one of us killed a fellow classmate? Hmm? What, does that freak you out? You guys got no balls, you know that? Is there just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you pray to mine if you want. Yeah. Actually, I don't have any either. Sorry. Stop talking. Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? <laughs> I sure did, chum. Allow me to present the next monokuma file. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. So please do your very tippy top best on this investigation. Do we really gotta do another investigation? It's only been like, what, three days? Since the mer since the Sayako? God damn. Examining the course of one of our friends. Having to suspect all our other friends. Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I hate no! it too. I, I have I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Hey. Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. Dead body's a simple op That's how you see things? What? That's not the point, man. <laughs> you are very enthusiastic about all of this, aren't you, nuts? Naturally. How can I not be? If we don't unmask the culprit, we all die. But that's true, but to jump into it so soon... What? Do you want to die? Such Fine, then go off and die somewhere. Right now, go ahead. You're a waste of space. Damn a dead you. body is an object? At least this guy has some heart. Piece of shit. Chihiro wasn't an object. Show a little respect or I'll be some into you. Calm down. Everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Byakuya said. K Kyoko, because... if we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right that Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Chihiro, That's right. then unless we do something, more victims could start piling up. Or get more victims? If we mess this up, we're all dead meat. Hey, hey! Hold on, hold on. If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. Oh, uh, he's just gonna confirm to us that it's not genocide. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't remember any rule like that. Actually, I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? The new rule has been added to the regulation so menu. Then. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Hey, um, well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out at least the potential of a serial killer angle. <laughs> Just one would totally murder that possibility. Farewell for now. You. I'll catch you guys at the class trial. Hmm. I can't say I understand his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one more person's life could still be in danger. <laughs> Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. You, son of a you need to shut the f up! So, well, um, for now, Taka and me are gonna drop Toko off at her room. Um, oh god, dude, that face! What is that? That nightmare! Why is she saying nice? I'm gonna get dropped off. Ugh. Uh, uh. Somebody kill her, please. I, I don't know. We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation without sleep. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, okay? then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. That's true. I hate this, but if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. God damn it. First of all, I better check the Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. Well, it's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Hmm. Hey, Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? Did you need something from me? Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know. 
Um, so, what'd you need? Okay. I'm going to let you cooperate cooperate with me during my investigation. So you should feel honored, you little peasant. Or some shit like that. Huh? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. To solve? No, I just... Stop talking. You seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. You have the honor of contributing to my investigation. So, you're inviting me to come with you? You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. Now then, shall we get started? But, but... We need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened, but it looks like I'll be working with Byakuya on this one. Eh, I don't mind. He's actually kind of smart, I think, so... There's a dumbbell on the floor, and there's a blood stain. Hmm. The Monokuma file said a blow to the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder right. weapon? I don't imagine it could have been anything else. <sighs> Dude, I'm gonna be depressed all day because of this shit. God. I just started the game, and you five minutes into the game, and you show me her corpse. Without any warning. I mean... The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it? Bloodlust. Yeah, it has to be... It has to be related to Byakuya, like, ever since you mentioned that... That common. Ah, shit. I could feel the life draining out of my own body. The dead body. She heroes, dead body. Very strange. But the more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. Well, but what? But we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. <laughs> All right, Frico. The poster's got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. I use this locker room all the time. Now, it's become the site of Chihiro's death. But why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if it oh, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else. Then <laughs> carried here. She was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her. But still, I still think she came here on her own, by choice. What makes you say that? She's been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. That's right, that's true. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Well, she, was, she must have been grinding. Kina or myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it? Mm. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night? However... Perhaps. But it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. So she must have invited Toka, because I guess because Toka is kind of like a similar body mass as Chihiro, and Sakura's just way too buff, and then I guess Celeste and Kyoko was just a little too too strange for Chihiro, or she knew that they would de decline, so I guess that's what happened. She needed support from others, but you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she also would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. Well, thank you, Sakura. That was actually quite useful. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chihiro talk about it, right? All I need to get is stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Yeah. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. Yeah, say that to Sayako. No, no, excuse me, Sakura. Yeah. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. Cause of Chihiro's complex. I can't help wonder what it might be. What? Oh, that that's actually a truth bullet? Okay. Hmm. Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Huh? Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need check we need to check every aspect of this case. But that's true, but let's go. If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. No, I think he's the right person. Because after all, he's the one that knows about Genocide Jack's handiwork and all that. He's definitely the right person. So, this is our next location. 
Huh? This place is related to the investigation? Hmm. Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Well, I mean, this is the room right before the locker room, so... I wonder if the gun has anything to do with it. No, that's impossible. If that were true, Chiro would be riddled with holes. Yep. Okay. Oh, maybe a fingerprint? Oh, there's a card reader, I forgot. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handy books, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Like... What's the point of that? Did you call for me? Oh, you can do that? You call for me? Has he been domesticated? <laughs> That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need some? Sure! What's up? Um, well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your e-handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? If there were some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl, the ceiling mounted Gatling gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. Hmm. And the school regulation prohibit anyone from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly correct! So then. That means only girls can go into the girls' locker room, and only boys can go into the boys' locker room. In other words, Chiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hmm. Hey Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? Hmm. Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Chihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in other words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Such Good ignorance. lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? Hmm. You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. Are you sure about that? It's highlighted, so that means there's a weak point. Loaning your e-handbook is prohibited, but borrowing it is fine. Okay... I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So you managed to stiff at the loophole in the regulations. Hm. Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Yeah You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then, since the dead can actually talk, they're not people anymore. They're things. Yep. Got it? Get it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but... In order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it, so... Uh... I was actually thinking the same thing. So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakuya and get your poop together. Or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure out the rest of your own damn self. Alright, Bear. Well, I know you're unfortunately lacking in mental fa faculties, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall? That'll help you understand what's going on. Card reader has been added. Okay. We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? Surveillance camera... Well, I guess looking at the surveillance... Or asking... Monokuma to look at the surveillance camera would be cheating. Or not fun, rather. A toaster! There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? It's an e-handbook! No wait, there's three of them! But what are they doing here? Hmm. So, you finally found them. Huh? Did you know these were here, Byakuya? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. Seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So then, these three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka? Hmm. You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks, and when I did... Ta-da! Sayaka Maizono. You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. Hmm. 
Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. A closer attention, loaning your EN. Only the act of loan. Ah, the act of loaning. Okay. Ah, uh, so yeah, if it's a dead person, okay. But I, I, I don't buy it. I, I still think it's Toka. It, it's just. What? Hmm. Hold on a second. What's wrong? Very strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. Then the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Doesn't that mean he's alive then? Pummeled with baseballs? The memory of it came flooding back. That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that the mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right, it wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Damn it! Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Making me now I'm hey! Really angry. What, what? Yeah. That e handbook is essential to a student's life. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. That's if I say I, it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break! It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure, and it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseball you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap! Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbook does have a single weak point. It does? I can't hear but it's a you. secret! I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks. What? Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm. Hard to say. You know what I think? I think his handbook isn't actually broken. Wah -wah? But you might ask, how could that be? Oh, leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. That's fine. Well, I don't see any con connections to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Broken e handbook. Interesting, so... <laughs> it can't be destroyed through sheer force, it's waterproof. And somehow Leon broke it. Hmm. Okay then. This should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed Chihiro. Hmm. To be exact, not quiet. Huh? Not quiet? Fight. What does he mean by that? What is this place anyway? The hunk of metal blocking the entrance seems like some kind of machine. What else are we supposed to do here? Let's see. This is one of the monitors Monokuma appeared on, it's just showing the... Okay. Alright, so I, I'm pretty sure I searched up everywhere. The exact, not quite. Certainly, I want to reveal Chiro's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then, you really think... You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro? Don't make me repeat Absolutely. I have no doubt Je Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. That murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? Nobody else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost. I can suddenly then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. What nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be a demented psychotic killer like that? <laughs> You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. Okay, well, show me. What do you mean by that? Oh. Okay. Don't make me repeat. Oh. Whoops. Don't make me repeat myself. Okay. And I have the basis to believe that. I assure you, Genocide Jack is one of us. Is there really proof? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. 
it's all clear. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Evidence that something like that really exists? Ah! Wait, that can't be Monokuma. Big trouble. Need your help. I don't have time. We're to busy. Leave you. us alone. But it's an emergency. Emergency! Come on, please! You gotta help me! Oh, what is it? Please. This is a serious emergency! Just calm down, okay, Hina? Yes, but, but, it's an emergency! An emergency? What happened? Well. Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Very strange. This is Toko. I must admit, I'm intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Why is Byakuya suddenly interested? Because just a day ago, he would just say, F off. Yeah. Don't make me repeat myself. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Exactly! Yeah. Okay, okay, come on, hurry! Wait for us, Tina. Let's go. It looks, it looks like she's headed to the dorm. To Toko's room, most likely. Why do I have a feeling that Toko is doing something that's exactly like what Genocide Jack would do? And that's why Byakuya is interested. You're right. Uh... Uh... Wait. Oh. But this is Junko's room. Where is the crazy bitch? Oh, Chihiro. God damn it. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve that. Fuck you, Toko. What? What am I supposed to do, son? Such You're talking- Okay, fuck you too, cunt. You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. Hmm. So, what's the emergency? So, well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in a room she could lay down. After a while, she came we came to back to check on her. Check on her, but, you know, see how she was doing, but when we did... It was weird. She refused to come out, and she kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff? That's fine. We should try talking to her ourselves. But yeah, good idea. Well, actually, Byakuya, you should go talk to her since she has such a... She has a hentai crush on you. I may as well give it a shot. The door swung open. Oh. Slowly and silently. Ugh. Holy crap! An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. What? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you, holding yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? Won't allow it. Huh? <laughs> Won't let Genocide Jack have control. D did she just cut? She just admitted that she's the killer. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What, what was that? She's been acting like that the whole time. Well, now it rang a little while ago. I'll dr drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. Um. It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down her door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door? Does she think she the same thing as Byakuya? Does she think the serial killer genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Dude, she literally just said... I'm gonna draw- okay. Is that why Toko's so scared? But Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Is there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Hello. Hey Byakuya, you think you can ask her? Come out of her room, I mean. That's fine. Sure, whatever. Huh? Gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Byakuya stood in front of her door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments. Ugh. What do you want? Leave me alone. You're so annoying. Uh. Ah, Bakula. It's Byakuya. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. That's like saying I won't kill anyone again. Pretty much, but I guess no one sees that. And with that, the door slams shut. 
Even Byakuya couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Oh, hold on! Hey, Byakuya, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But, Stop if I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well then, let's go. Now waiting for a reply, Byakuya sped away. Byakuya! And I hurry to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept on walking toward his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to a stop in front of a certain room. The library? Hmm. Come on, let's go in. Okay, maybe this room? If I remember, on the other side of this door... It's the archive, right? Hmm. Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? Let's go. It'll all make sense once you're inside. What do we got? Whoa! There's so many books and files. And so much dust too. So in other words. I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. Alright, let's take a look. There's a wooden box. It's empty, although judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. An extension cord, huh? This shelf is stuffed with... stuffed tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Hmm. Ha, ah, you have a sharp eye indeed to select that file. Huh? That's, right. That's the report on the president presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up and pe for peeking at it. Without making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. Okay, there's so many files stuffed onto the shelf, what's in all these That's things? Enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like, members of the Diet or something? <laughs> no, I mean the ones with real power, the secret council controlling everything from the shadows. You're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. Y you're j joking, right? Hmm. Am I? I'll just let it go for now. Which one am I missing? There's a ton of thick files stuffed into the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking about looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. The kind of things any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at. Besides Toko. We'll probably get a turn on. Huh? What do you mean? All those files there are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh? Okay, then what the heck am I supposed to look for, bro? This? Huh? It's a desk lamp. It's the same one I saw Byakuya using at the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Hmm. So, are you finally begin beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. Hmm. It's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such That's your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that, it's just, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but... I mean, there's just so much. How can anyone put all this together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much Hope's Peak truly wields. Or perhaps, <laughs> the Mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, Well, that's just from your perspective, though. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. Hmm. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What? What do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple? Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. You don't understand what they actually represent, and you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? <laughs> Besides, what you consider usually based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? <laughs> the documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there's no doubt. Oh, hold on a second, you're saying you've read all these documents, and more than once? But 
All of this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? Hmm. My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Well, ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Members of the Togami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So in other words... I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council, and I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. But whenever I have half time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. <laughs> Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Yakuya is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Eh. Nah, I'm still scared of the mastermind. Hmm. And what always interests me, interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through these, those reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Byakuya grabbed a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case, case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack cases have been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Bloodlust is written in blood, and the victim's body is suspended. It's exactly same. It's exactly the same as what happened to Chihiro. <laughs> Save your surprise. The best part is yet to come. Oh wow! Thank you, little cuck. Hmm. With a second characteristic, where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So, how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's right. Victim? That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other the words... culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. Go! In other words, that right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then Genocide Jack really is. Such a brutal fiendish killer really is walking around among us? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? I never imagined a killer with such reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just find... You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Oh, now I have to read the books. My goodness. They reveal the ones with real power, the secret council controlling everything from the shadows. They detail all the people. Okay. What? Why not? Take a look, man. I mean, like... Well, you let me see it. That's fine. Oh uh, well, that was a quick 180. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. <gasps> Secret stash of bongs. Yakuya handed me the file, and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had been collected. Oh yeah. Ken Harada, the murder took place in the parking lot, victims, okay, bloodlust. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages, Ken Harada, Tetsuro Honda, Gaku, Isai, Yoshida. Yoshida? It's another persona name. Komatsuna Taro, Takefumi Gono, Uchida, Naohisa, Takeshi, Yuto, there was no end to it. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read, all of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left in the victim's own blood. Hmm. Now take a look at the next page, and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page? <gasps> what is it? Profiling results? All of the crimes took place either on weekdays at night, 
or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the student may be a student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. As an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. So in other words, the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality? Like the kind of thing you see on TV? So I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up until now. Or maybe it really isn't, I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Let's go. Alright, we should get going soon. Where are we going? Anywhere but here. We finished our business, haven't we? Uh As usual, Byakuya turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Hmm. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things that I need to take care of before the class trial. Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time to Come on, you. enough of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he'd asked me to join him, he cut me off. In the end, I felt like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I didn't cover some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack, he's the one that killed Chihiro. And that murderous fiend is one of us! But who is it? I have to find that out no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girl's room. I should check the boy's room too. And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find out everything I can. Oh, god. What do you have for me, Hifumi? Ding ding ding! Hifumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... Another stat increased for me. Evidence? What did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. But I guarantee I'm that what sure I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm. Oh yeah! Miss mm. Ludenberg mm. says she'd witnessed mm. something worthwhile too. Really? Wh what did she see? Well, she refused to tell me. Seem... It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, so where's Celeste now? Mm. The warehouse mm. by the dorm. Mm. She was there, mm. but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Alright, now let's go inside. Ugh. Please, somebody untie her hands. Oh, Kyoko, what's up? Have you made any progress on your investigation? Indeed. Generally speaking. However. But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. <laughs> unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But, but. So then. Before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time. Thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to de determine it as whereabouts. Goodbye. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take a look at another, another look at the body then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing? That's definitely worth worrying about. What happened? Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyways. Whoa there. Let's see. Hero's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug? So then, this is no rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Hero's fatal injury was the blow to the head. Which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, that... There's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. Oh, there's no scissors. But seeing them again and looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? Status of the dead body. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chihiro. And to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Oh, where is that? Oh, the library. The, the plug. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack case file one more time. 
gen uh any new dialogues? Damn. Chihiro's presence was he especially weak. Her body and her soul. No to target such a helpless being is unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I cannot forgive this. I have a feeling Sakura's gonna be pretty uh passionate about the next class trial. Would love to see that. Yeah, okay. Alright, so there's another place that I need to revisit, but where? There's still more I need to check. The poster I looked at as well. The big breast swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. Girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. Eh, I mean, it could be like, I wanna be just like her. So it helps you motivate. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah, so I'm trying to leave, but... Oh! Now it works. Uh, yeah, okay, I haven't checked the boys' room yet. Let's see if there's anything good. Ah, oh, could the poster be missing? It is! Wait, but what's the point of that? Was replaced. That is probably where. That's probably where um it was supposed to be. The girls' room. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. Oh, but wait, that reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is. That's right. There's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a bre big-breasted swimsuit model. But the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker room. Indeed. How does that make sense? Because the Sayaka one made a hell of a lot more sense, but not this. Oh, there's a shit stain. What could that be? There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Well, it's obviously doo doo. Right? Or maybe... Well, it must be Toka's doo-doo then. It's nasty as hell. Let's see if there's anything useful... The pool is clean. Oh. Do you think the posters in the boys and the girls locker room could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid attention to the posters. I see. However, but there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a lot of protein coffee every time I finish exercising. You have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some of the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. Oh, so that's what it was. A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. Still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain there to begin with. Disappearing stain. Alrighty. I think I found enough. Alrighty, so I believe next I have to go to the warehouse. Um... No, there's two places I need to go, I think. The library, because of that plug that was used as a rope. Yep. The lamp. Huh? The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see, it's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here, but last time I saw it, it was definitely on. It was definitely right here. Oh, that's right, Biakuya was using an, an extension cord, which the killer used to kill Bihaya. But there's no extension cord now. I wonder if... Okay. I wonder if there's anything useful here besides that. Thick layer of dust, maybe there's some kind of clue here, not really. I know what was around here somewhere. It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that, I can't think of anyone but Yakuya. Oh. Interesting. There's nothing else to do here. Uh, 
Okay, and now on to... Oh shoot, where was it? Ah... Uh, the warehouse. Alright, I'm just gonna do that before I forget. Now the warehouse should be... Right there. Or somewhere there. Oh wait, she hot wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Could this room actually have some big clues? Because Chihaya was nearby here. And she was like, oh don't worry about it or something. Remember when we were I remember when uh we we had a conversation here. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might mis misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then did you find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. Actually. Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. That's true. What? Really? I mean, dude, you were talking to her. Indeed. This was right before night time. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> Wait. Celeste has a blue hair? Huh. She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assume she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but it would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girl's locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently... She went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. Well, that kind of failed. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying. So either Chihiro... Well, I, well that means Celeste is either lying... Or there must have been something important in Chihiro's bag. Or it was just to like, get rid of all the evidence. Trace. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account. Yeah, Celeste has no reason to kill her though, so I believe her. Alright, let's take a look at what's inside. They even have surveillance cameras here. Wow. I don't see anything noteworthy. Okay, so let's see how many truth bullets I have. 15 so far. Last time we needed about 18. So clearly I'm missing... Well, let's see here. Look at the map real quick. So I went to her. Okay, I need to talk to her next. Oh, you know. Okay, I should probably talk to all these guys next time. Alright, cool. Whew! Well... That was an unpleasant episode. God damn. So, for some reason... I'm assuming... I'm, I'm going to assume it's Toka. I mean, there's, there's just no other reasoning. Especially when the game doesn't even mention, like, the possibility... That... That, uh, Toka could be the killer. See, like... Like, this game is pretty good at predicting what the players might think, and that's the part that I really love. But then at the same time, it's like, that kind of ends up being predictable because once they, do once they don't mention out, like, a possibility... That means it's usually that possi- like, that choice. So what I'm trying to say is, like, the game doesn't mention that Toka could be the killer. There was no reason Shihiro had to die, though. Ugh, it, it, it really is almost like this game hears you, and that would be crazy. I mean, if, if this game hears you and, like, 
they detect you saying, Oh, I like this character the most, and then they end up killing that character. This game will be like... This game is probably one of the most underrated games in history. But I'm sure it was just a coincidence. But anyways... I really love how this game... Predicts, or, or rather just, you know, puts into thought that like, what the players might think. This game's, uh... Because the MC says a lot of things that I was gonna say. Not just the MC, but the other characters as well. Now, the one thing that I wish this game did better though was, um... Or so far, you know, I'm only on chapter 2, is... To kind of make the, uh, killer less obvious. Now, of course, I mean, it, it could easily not be Toka. So, maybe I'm just naive. But chapter 1 was clearly Leon, and it was Leon. And chapter 2... I mean, it, it, so far, it feels like Toka, because... Or, oh no, have I been saying her name right? Toka? Toko, yeah, Toko, because... She's the one that that's like the writer. She, I mean, so I'm assuming she has good handwriting. I am assuming she could not, but... But then more than that, the thing about Bloodlust and like... Her, you know, affection for Byakuya... And all that, it just makes too much sense. So, if it turns out to be her, then... Yeah, I wish it was a little more un uh, unpredictable, but... Other than that, this game has been fantastic. I'm definitely gonna be playing the second and the third version of the game. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you're new, which you probably are. And yeah, peace.